Hello, how's it going? How's everybody doing? It's officially Sunday. It is the Sunday here in America, the day, the Sunday before football Sunday. Um, I'm not ecstatic about it, obviously, because I don't really care much for football. Don't tell anyone though, because OMG, I will probably get rampaged for it. Um, but I, I am not, I'm not a football person. I like baseball. I like basketball. I love soccer, but I'm not a football fan. I don't know why. However, my husband is obviously a football fan as all men are, you know, over here in America. So of course I'm going to make my man happy by making him some buffalo wings next week. I'm going to show you my recipe for it though, so you can do it next week. Now last year when I did uh, my football recipes, I did it on the day of Super Bowl Sunday and I got so many people saying, oh my gosh, I wish I would have had your recipes before, you know, the Sunday. And so that's why I'm doing it today. I'm doing the Super Bowl Sunday recipes today so you can prepare for next week. Okay. All right. Hi, Jennifer. How's it going, girl? How are you? Um, so as you can tell, this is the official launch of Vegan Family Style. Uh, the cookbook is up and ready and going and oh my gosh, guys, I am so excited to see it. I ordered 20 books last week so I can get online with you guys. Uh, I'm going to set up an event where I can sign one of y'all's books and send it to you absolutely free because we have, you know, this past month grown exponentially. Okay, this time last year I had about... 1500 followers on this Facebook page and it is at 5,700 or 800 I think right now anyways every thousand uh, Followers that I get I give a free cookbook to and usually it's the forks over knives cookbook But since mine's out I get to give that to you this month So I will be giving you a free cookbook that is personally signed by me Okay, the only way that you can enter into this is if you comment on this uh, video or the said post that I did about it a few weeks ago. Uh, those of you that commented on the post, you're still in the drawing for it. If you comment on this video though, I will enter you into the drawing for my, I can say it now, <laughs> my cookbook, which is called Vegan Family Style. And this recipe is actually in it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Yay! Yes! Ravenhawk. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I know I love cauliflower buffalo wings. They're my favorite. They're my absolute favorite. Okay. So there are a ton of cauliflower buffalo wings uh, recipes out there, right? Now I have tried several different versions of it. All right. I've done it with panko crumbs. I've done it with a beer batter. I've done it with um, just kind of lightly roasting them in the oven and then tossing them in the sauce. This is my absolute favorite way to do it, okay? I do a combination. I do a combination of a beer batter and a homemade breadcrumb, okay? I said it, homemade breadcrumb. I don't like buying extra crap that I, I can't afford. Now, I know it's just a simple box of breadcrumbs, but if you're throwing away the ends of your breads, uh, which we buy for our kids all the time, you know, the little ends that the kids don't like eating Personally, I don't like them either. Um, those things are, as they call, liquid gold. Uh, you can use the ends of your bread and toast them up in the oven and make your own breadcrumbs. Yeah? Okay. All right, let's do that. Here we go. Sorry, I need a little drink of wine. Uh, so I went ahead and toasted up some breadcrumbs so you can see what they are. And again, these are just my, my little ends of my bread that I've just toasted up in the oven for about 10 minutes at 400 degrees and they come out as beautiful little croutons, right? Okay, so I'm going to pop these bad boys in. Whoa, let's not go crazy now. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to pop these in my little food processor. Somebody asked me a little while ago what kind of food processor I had. And I thought it was the Hamilton Beach. It's the Cuisinart. 
I got it for a birthday present years ago, like six, seven years ago. I can't, I can't remember how, how long ago it was. But anyways, it's the Cuisinart, but you can use whatever kind of food processor you want. It does not work in a blender. Don't try it in a blender, okay? So I just kind of slowly gather them all up and put them in my little food processor. And we're going to sit here and blend these bad boys up until they make a fine breadcrumb, right? Okay. Get back here and you stop that. Throw on a fit business. Uh, it has been not working so well for me lately. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Hang on. Okay, we're going to go a little bit longer because I like them to be really, really fine. Thank you, Chelsea, by the way. Uh, I know I'm so excited about the book. Uh, Rashida, I would love to have your your cookbook even if I don't win. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Yes, so uh, I just did a post on the cookbook. Go and look it up. It's on Amazon. It's on uh, Google Play. It's on Amazon Kindle. Uh, and it's on iTunes as well as Freeze and Press, which is an amazing company that I went through for publishing my book. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go around with it. said product that we're working with okay and like I said I like it to be a little bit more finer uh, but you do you honey whatever works best for you okay and this usually goes let me put some in my little bowl I have an assigned jar for this here breadcrumb mix all right like I said I'll sit there and I'll keep the ends of my bread and I'll pop them in the freezer for whenever I need to do this, whenever I run out of my breadcrumbs. And I just put them in this little jar for whenever I need them for like the toppings of my uh, mac and cheese, which is what this is going to go so well with. It's not even funny. We have some leftover mac and cheese from yesterday's birthday party. So uh, that is what these wings are going to go with. Yes? Okay. All right. That is how we do our breadcrumbs. Super easy, super fast, and super cheap, right? You don't have to spend a whole lot on breadcrumbs, right? Okay, so I've got cauliflower. Uh, I like looking in my grocery store whenever it's on sale because I can get my cauliflower at Aldi for like 99 cents sometimes. That's why it's such an amazing product. Oh, and by the way, did you know that cauliflower is amazing for your immune system yes okay so part of the thing that I did in my cooking class was learning about certain different nutritionist uh, ideals about food and how it helps certain people I went through a whole a whole section on diabetes and um, what was the other one heart disease oh my gosh y'all so much information on heart disease it's not even funny so um, Cauliflower kept popping up for people with diabetes and heart disease and everything like that. And I was appalled at how much vitamin C is. So here's, here's a little tidbit for you. Um, vegetables that are white are usually good for your immune system, okay? So yes, that includes onions, obviously, and garlic. Uh, cauliflower is another one. Yeah, oranges are not the only thing that have vitamin C in them and that are great for your immune system. I know a lot of people will sit there and go, oh, well, I need more vitamin C. I'll drink some orange juice and take some tablets and all that stuff. No, girl, go buy yourself a cauliflower. Make some cauliflower wings. Super amazing for your health. Yes? Okay. So I'm just kind of clearing off all those beautiful little tidbits. Do not throw away the leaves. Know why? Because I put them in my little freezer bag with said uh, freezer veggies that I make my veggie broth with. Yes? Okay? Don't throw away all the little tidbits. Those are beauties. 
liquid gold, anything to save you money, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna go around my cauliflower. Be very, very careful. I use a serrated knife, just so you know, okay? Serrated knife, go all the way around to get that lovely little core out because nobody likes that core. Uh, but it's going to make beautiful veggie broth later. Yes? Okay, there we go. Now we're stuck with a beautiful head of cauliflower. I actually want to fry a whole cauliflower head one of these days in my air fryer. I'm gonna do it, just wait and see. I'm gonna do it, okay? So we want big chunks like this, right? Most of the ends are going to come off like that, okay? Very easy, super, super amazing, and again, super cheap. Super good for your immune system. Amazing stuff here. Oh my gosh. We have a vegan restaurant here in town that does beautiful, beautifully made cauliflower wings. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about it. If you ever come to Omaha, you need to go check out Modern Love. It is my absolute favorite place to go in the whole wide world. That's where we went for my birthday. That's where we're going to go for Valentine's Day because they always have amazing food there that doesn't even taste vegan okay do you use only organic um here's the thing about organic now i know i'm probably gonna get reamed for this and i'm sorry y'all i don't buy organic i really don't uh mainly because we're a family of six and i can't afford that price i'm sorry i'm sorry i know i know i i said it i said it and i'm gonna get that out of the way but if you want to do organic you do you, honey, okay? I'm not gonna judge you for it. Don't you judge me for it. We're gonna sit here and be friends and everything, all right? Uh, but I do not buy organic. I really don't. I buy whatever is cheap, whatever is available, whatever my family will eat, yes? Okay, so I also like clearing away whatever little bits of the ends that there still are on the cauliflower because even though I love as much cauliflower as we can get off of these things, it's going to make a much better bite-sized version of the cauliflower head. Okay? Yes. Sorry for the question. Me too. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, it's okay, honey. Uh, any kind of questions you have, I'm super, super ecstatic to answer, okay? Do not feel bad about uh, asking a question. Do not feel bad about it at all. No judgment zone. Yes? No judgment zone. Absolutely not. Now, if we're going to talk coffee, that's another thing. Don't get, it, don't get me started on my coffee. Okay, so I've got these pretty much all the way cleared off, as best as possible at least. Like I said, I'm just clearing off as much of the ends as I possibly can. All right, we're gonna go into the beer batter. I like the combination of a beer batter with breadcrumbs, okay? Because the breadcrumbs give it that crunch, the beer batter gives it that beautiful ooey gooeyness that you're looking for on the inside of a cauliflower of a buffalo wing. Sorry, buffalo wing. We're going to go there. Okay, so I've got one cup of flour. Yes, one cup of flour. And then I've got a barbecue mix that's got salt, pepper, paprika, a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of cumin, all that stuff going in there. And then we're going to wait for our liquids. All right, my husband's a beer snob. He really is. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. If it was up to me, I would just grab the first thing off the shelf, but he's a beer snob. We're gonna go with one of these babies, okay? This is a Snow and Tell Oak Aged Scotch Ale. Again, he's a beer snob. I buy the cheapest wine on the shelf usually, but he's the one that's like, no, let me look at this, hang on. Okay, it's done by, uh, Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, just so you know. Woo! All right, now I don't measure, I just kind of go by what it is. So we're gonna go with like half of the beer first and see where it goes from there, okay? I'm gonna whisk it together and get that whisk going. And to that, we're going to add a couple tablespoons of soy sauce. No, we're not adding salt to this. The soy sauce is going to be our salt, okay? Then we're gonna add a little bit of vegan Worcestershire sauce, yes, give it that barbecue-y flavor. Then we're gonna go in with a little bit of smoke, uh, liquid smoke, okay? Be careful with liquid smoke, it's very potent. 
a little bit of liquid smoke, all right? And you want this to look like kind of a pancake, sorry, let's see if I can talk to you. Pancake batter, all right? Pancake batter is what we're looking for, yes? You go in with a little bit more beer, all right? The rest of it's for you to drink, yes? Okay, I'll let my husband finish it whenever he gets up. I'm trying to stay away from beer right now. But I love beer, I do. I'm a big beer snob too. I don't like to admit it usually though. Okay, that is about the consistency you're looking for. That right there, okay? So a little bit more loose than a pancake batter, but a little bit more thick than a crepe batter, okay? That right there. All right, so I've got my cute little baking trays from my air fryer all lined with parchment mainly because I don't want it to stick to these beautiful little bottoms here, okay? As you can tell, I've already got some stuff on there anyways. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna go in with one of these beautiful little cauliflowers and we're gonna sift it through some of our homemade breadcrumbs that we've got. So first in the beer batter, then in the breadcrumbs, okay? makes a beautiful, beautiful crust for these babies. All right, whoops, let's go with more. Smaller size first, just like that, okay? I was thinking I couldn't do veggie broth because I, could, I don't do organic, no honey. Uh, don't worry about whatever kind of organic or uh, regular veggies or anything like that. Whatever the veggie scraps that you have, which is, uh, the ends of onions, you know, the garlic peels, the, um, the ends of uh, celery and carrots and all that stuff. Anything that you deem worthy to throw away is actually going to go in your little veggie broth bag that goes in the freezer. And again, I usually do it um, once a week, usually on Sundays is my veggie broth day because I've gotten a huge bag of veggies in the freezer and everything, okay? I'm gonna get my hands a rinse. All right. And I'm gonna show you guys what the after effect looks like, because yes, I've already done it. I've already made some for you, and I'm gonna show you how I do my sauces too, okay? All right. Aren't these beautiful, by the way? Look at those. So gorgeous. Love them. Okay, so here's my little trick, my little tidbit. I twice bake these suckers, all right? Yes, I do. I twice bake them because, A, I feel like, by the way, those are gorgeous. Look at those. Those are without sauce. They just look amazing. You could probably eat them as is, all right? Uh, I twice bake them because I feel like you get the extra crunch, the extra layer of ooey gooeyness on the inside as well. And uh, I, I just feel like they come out so much better whenever they're twice baked versus just a single bake. Okay, so the first round goes in for about 10 minutes on 400 degrees, and the second round goes in for about 10 minutes at about 400 degrees as well. I'm going in with about one cup of buffalo sauce. This has, this is my Red Hot Buff Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce. Yes, it's vegan, don't even ask. I already checked, all right? I get it at Costco in the bucket loads basically because my daughters will put it on basically anything and everything. They love hot sauce, okay? And then I've got one cup of my Country Crock uh, plant-based butter. Yes, yes I said that, okay? And that is it for the first sauce, all right? You want to make sure and mix it around really, really good. The butter is absolutely necessary for this because that red hot hot sauce is super hot and that butter kind of gives it that creaminess that it's lacking, that it needs to kind of cut through that, that base and everything, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to go in with these things they're huge just huge uh, so we're gonna go in and we're we're gonna dunk these in our sauce place them back on the rack 
Yes. And again, we're going to twice bake them because I feel like twice baking them turns out so much better. But you do you, honey. If you want to keep them as is, that's fine. Okay? They're perfectly edible right now. But like I said, trust me on the twice baking thing. It really is worth it. Okay? Now this is obviously for the adults. I'm going to show you the kid-friendly version because my boys do not like hot stuff whatsoever. My girls will like this. My daughter will probably eat this. My oldest daughter. There we go. We're going to go in. All right. And again, we're going to turn this on 400 degrees. Whoops. On air fry for about 10 minutes. Okay. And it's really going to bring out the crunchiness of those beautiful breadcrumbs and everything. The second sauce that I have going for you guys, and yes, I do it in a separate bowl and everything because it's so much better, okay? I've got a homemade barbecue sauce. Now, hmm, why not just go ahead and buy your own? Well, because I don't like all the added sugars that are in it. I don't like all the at sometimes... A lot of the time, barbecue sauces are done with a Worcestershire sauce, which is not actually vegan. It has fish in it, okay? Which is fine. If you're pescatarian, you can go ahead and use a regular barbecue sauce then. So I usually make my own with a vegan Worcestershire sauce. Not to mention, it's super cheap and you can can it yourself, okay? Okay. So this is about one can of tomato paste. Again, super cheap. A little bit of mustard, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of vegan Worcestershire sauce. I got some molasses in there, uh, some garlic powder, some onion powder, some paprika, smoked paprika, by the way. Okay, so we're going to go in there with that. And I usually let it simmer on the stove for about 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. And it makes a beautiful, beautiful barbecue sauce. Yes? Okay. Again, we're going to go in there and just kind of roll these babies around in that beautiful barbecue sauce. Mmm, yum, y'all. Can I tell you how good this is? It is so daggum easy, super good, and the kids love it. I never have a complaint about it not even being chicken, okay? I really don't. That right there is a gorgeous barbecue sauce, yes? Okay. Same way, 10 minutes, 400 degrees, all that jazz. Yes? Yes. Okay, so real quick, if you don't feel like doing a mac and cheese and you just want to do some french fries with this, by the way, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do french fries because we have been making french fries all week long in the air fryer. I feel like that's all I do in the air fryer right now. Super, super simple. And I'm not, whoops, oh, don't get my sleeves in there. Yes, make my own too. Yay, good girl, that's awesome. Okay, so we just got a regular basic uh, potato here, right? Okay, uh, one thing that I learned in my cooking school too, by the way, was to make sure and level out a hard rooted vegetable, which is basically going to be your turnips, your beets, um, Obviously, potatoes, carrots, anything like that. You want to make sure you have a sturdy, sound piece of uh, vegetable right there because if you don't, you are liable to cut your finger. We don't want that, or a nail, you know, whichever. So I'm just going to kind of slightly peel off all the way around these beautiful babies right here. Okay? And I'm not cutting much off, just like that much. And again, goes in your veggie broth bag. Yes? Yes. Okay? Now we're going to go through and we're going to do like a fourth of an inch cut on these bad boys. You see that? Okay? Fourth of an inch all the way down, all the way through the vegetable. And yes, potatoes are vegetables. Don't argue with me. I love my potatoes. It's the main reason why I like being vegan. The only reason why I like being vegan is because of potatoes. Yes? All right. Then, same thing we're going to go through with about a fourth of an inch cut. 
and it comes out with a beautiful little french fry. You know that gorgeous little thing that you're used to? Uh, there's a little bit of a dead bit on that end though. You want to cut that off. Uh, but you know those beautiful little french fries that you're used to getting at McDonald's and everything? That's what you're looking for. A little bit of a fourth of an inch cut all the way down. All the way down. And again, I just kind of stack them up in either twos or threes. We're just going to go in with another fourth of an inch cut. All right. Makes perfect french fries every time. No need for a stupid little french fry cutter thing that ends up taking up way too much space in your kitchen. Yes? Yes. All right. I'm going to show you one more time, baby. One more time. And I don't like jazzing up my french fries too much. I really don't. I keep it real simple. Salt, pepper, olive oil. That's it. That's it, y'all. It's the one thing my husband loves making in this air fryer, too, by the way, is these darned old french fries. We've made sweet potato fries. We've made carrot fries. I've yet to make a rutabaga fry or a jicama fry, but I bet those are good, too. And again, we're just going down with a little fourth of an inch cuts. Yes, all the way through. Woo! There we go. All the way down the middle. And again, those beautiful little skins are going to make great for your veggie bag. This right here is my said veggie broth bag. I keep reusing this here bag uh, so much so that um, it's actually kind of falling apart. <laughs> but this is where all my veggie scraps go, okay? The ends of the cauliflower go in there. All the beautiful little leaves that we took off and everything too. You got, I got my ends of my onions in there my peels from the garlic cloves, all that jazz makes a beautiful, beautiful veggie broth, all right? I fill it up in my little Instapot down there. I fill it all the way up with water, put the whole bag in there, and then I add some salt and some peppercorns in there and I let it brew. I don't know what just happened. Maybe my internet's going down or something. I'm sorry, guys. Are, are you with me? Everybody still here? Okay, I'm almost done, I promise. All right, so my french fries, here we go. Got a little bit of olive oil. And then a little bit of salt and pepper, yes? Sad news, guys. Sad, sad news. My little pepper grinder, my electronic one, busted on me. I gotta go buy a new one now. So I'm down to this here thing again. Now you can add whatever seasonings you want to it. Uh, sometimes my husband likes adding paprika, some smoked paprika. I like adding some barbecue seasonings on top of it. Uh, if you want kind of more of a spice, you can go with some cayenne pepper, some chili pepper, or something like that. But either way, that is how you make an amazing french fry that goes along with it. All right? Now, one thing that another recipe that my cookbook has is chili fries. All right? I have a homemade recipe for chili uh, that goes on top of your french fries and everything. You look amazing. Thank you so much, Jennifer Ray. Hi, Kristen, how's it going? Hi, Maggie. Do you make your own ketchup and fries? No, I don't. Uh, I buy, that is the one thing I do buy that is organic. I'll show you, hang on. My Hunts, no high fructose corn syrup, thicker and richer tomato ketchup. That's my ketchup, all right? That's what I use, but you do you, honey. There is amazing recipes out there for homemade ketchup. I just don't have the time to do it. Uh, I make my homemade barbecue sauce and everything like that enough as is uh, because I love a homemade barbecue sauce. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Please go use these recipes for next weekend for the Super Bowl, and we'll see you later.